The Lord be with you. Welcome to Emmanuel Lutheran Church. This morning we observe Reformation Day. Divine Service Setting 3 is found on page 184, our opening hymn, 655. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will speak of your testimonies before kings, O Lord, and shall not be put to shame. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Come, O children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. I will speak of your testimonies before kings, O Lord, and shall not be put to shame. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, 
and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will toward men. We praise Thee, we bless Thee, we worship Thee. We glorify Thee, we give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father, Almighty and gracious Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us steadfast in your grace and truth. Protect and deliver us in times of temptation. Defend us against all enemies and grant to your church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. The first reading for the Festival of the Reformation is from the Re Revelation to St. John, chapter 14. Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come. And worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The epistle is from Romans, chapter 3. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped, and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, Although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness, because in his divine forbearance he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time, so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By a law of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 8th chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham, and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. The third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The hymn of the day, 656. Please be seated.
Though devils all the world should fill, all eager to devour us, we tremble not, we fear no ill, they shall not overpower us. This world's prince may still scowl fierce as he will, he can harm us none, he's judged, the deed is done. One little word can fell him. In the name of Jesus, amen. Wars are fought over freedom. Blood is shed over liberty. Ink, lead, and graphite have lined pages with the words of the hope of emancipation. We live in a society overcome by the belief that freedom is the crown jewel of civilization. Are they wrong? Is freedom and liberty the highest achievement that man has accomplished over all these years? As Americans, we are incredibly sensitive to any negative talk towards democracy and personal freedom. We believe that it's a given. It's almost a divine right. It's sometimes almost a religion. It leads me to ask, has Satan's temptation to govern what God cannot do swept so far across America that even the Lutherans are getting lazy. Reformation Day takes us away from the lie that evil doesn't exist, that the devil lets us revel in our liberty from him, and that our sins obey the emancipation won for us by Christ's death. There are those of us who know what evil looks like. There are some of us who believe true evil is happening in the world around us. Some of us have had some pretty evil things happen to us or around us. I'm especially thinking of our servicemen and women, our civil guardians, our medical personnel, and so on. It's hard to ignore this kind of terror. They know that evil is real. But that's why we must pay attention to the text from Revelation. These are not weak words, but we must take them to heart. Revelation is not merely about end-time predictions, but it's also about the victory already won for us that is in Christ. Fear God and give Him glory, because the hour of His judgment has come. And worship Him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. These words are recorded for us as something that evil cannot comprehend. How can it? All evil cares about is destruction, death, anarchy, and eternal chaos. Evil cannot fathom its end in Christ. So you cannot, on one hand, hate God because you think He has done nothing about evil. You cannot say, God does not exist because evil exists. That's wrong. The majesty of God is not limited by evil. It's not bound by it or bows to its demands. Evil is broken by Christ. So if you want evil to finally be judged and you want God to act, no, you beg God to do it. Then look at what the Bible says. The hour of His judgment has come. The Holy Spirit is not confusing. It's clear. Evil has been, will be, is presently judged, and its punishment is coming. Christ will cast it off like you cast off your muck boots from the field. Evil is real. Then so is goodness. If evil acts against us, then God works for us in Christ. If evil scares you, then God will comfort you in Jesus. In Jesus alone, you are saved. You are protected. A mighty fortress is your God, a mighty shield and weapon. So on Reformation Day, we must also talk about the elephant that's in the room. And by elephant, I mean the king of evil himself, the devil, Satan, his terrible acts have been brutal against you since you have been born. 
harsher since you've been baptized, strongest when you are confident in Christ. The spirit of Reformation Day is not only about singing Luther hymns, which we all like. It's not merely beating our chests proudly while reading the Augsburg Confession, which you should read. The true spirit of Reformation Day is about being Christians. And Christians fight with the devil constantly. You do, I do, and even they all do. The devil is wicked. He lies, he cheats, he steals, he kills, he hurts, he talks too much, he eats too much, he takes your children, he hates your wives, he especially despises your husband. He doesn't want you to find a godly spouse. He doesn't want you to go to church. He doesn't want you to learn your catechism. He doesn't want you to sing your hymns. He doesn't want you to pay attention to politics, what's happening in the schools, colleges, and doctor's offices. He really just doesn't want you to be you. The devil hates Christians. He hates Lutherans. He hates it when we, the inheritors of the Reformation, look directly at him and call him out. And that's why we have our gospel. If you abide in me and in my word, you are my disciples. And you will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. Freedom, liberty, emancipation. Christians are not obsessed with evil. We look at Christ as the one who has freed us. The devil, evil, the world doesn't get it. And you can hear them all right now. They're saying things like, how can you say you're offspring of Abraham, sons and daughters of Christ's freedom? How can you say that? Look at this world. And truth be told, you should look at this world. And when we see all this, we should look at it with the eyes of the church, the eyes that Christ himself has sanctified for us. So stand here from the pinnacles of this holy temple, along with the angels. Hold to the cross and peer over into the darkness and just see how far that light shines. Where Christ reigns, the devil cannot. Where Christ's cross beams across the landscape, Darkness and evil can only be scattered where Christ's blood trickles down his body onto the floor. So too do your sins fall from your shoulders as shackles released from your feet. This is how the Lutherans, the church, how Christians look at these matters. O oh, little flock, fear not the foe. Christ is at our side, and the victory has been won. But even so, you ask, Pastor Castellaro, how is the Reformation personal for me? We already talked about how we cannot give evil more attention than it deserves, and it's good and all to poke and call out the devil and remind him of his failure. But the real freedom, liberty, is not found in the way we think, but it is freedom that we are given from our sins. The Church of the Reformation preaches the true gospel to each and every one of you. And this gospel is the greatest treasure we have. It's the most personal thing that you have. It's your greatest possession. And it's going to be the only thing you get to take into eternity. So just think about it. Lately, we are all experiencing the rising costs of living. We are all engaged in some form of strife over ideals and politics. And many of us are already exhausted of the constant fear of having to compromise our faith and beliefs just to keep our vocations. That's truly real. It's really scary. And it's definitely something for us to think about even if we do not want to. But consider the text of the hymn that you sang just a moment ago, and you did it with such bravado. Did you think anything of the text when you sang, 
and take they our life, goods, fame, child, and wife. I have to ask, are you prepared for that? Did you give any words to the consideration, let all these be gone? They have nothing won. The kingdom ours remaineth. Reformation Day, the spirit of the Reformation, is not about browbeating you into Lutheran submission. It's about the belief and chief place of the Word of God in our lives. We are the only ones celebrating Reformation like this. And those lines from the hymn put it all into perspective. All of these earthly things are fleeting, and so are those temporal distractions. But this church focuses on the gospel. So here's the gospel, plain and simple. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith so that he might be just and the justifier, the one who has faith in Jesus. There is nothing that this text doesn't touch. The power behind these words is immeasurable. And if you pay close enough attention, you can see this power too, because it's about Jesus. You cannot talk of freedom from evil, liberty from the devil, and emancipation from your sins outside of Jesus. Because outside of Jesus, none of that exists. If you are still trying to vindicate God, stop because he can do it himself. If you want your answer to the problem of evil, then you only need to look at the cross. Don't tell me that God's power is lacking when I mean, Christ has literally taken on everything you fear, every darkness, every sin, every evil, gross desire you and your neighbors have, and he died for them. If you want the devil's mouth to be stopped, then confess the creed again. And he descended into hell. It was then that the devil was stupefied. If you are truly struggling with your sins and fear that you are losing your faith, then you need this gospel more than anything. You are redeemed, saved, forgiven as a gift. You are washed you are cleaned, you are free. You are in Christ, and you are something very brand new. So that is the spirit of the Reformation. And these realities are yours now and every day. Reformation Day outside this church struggles to have any recognition when it has to compete with days like Halloween and hunting season. But really, these things should have to fight for a time with Reformation Day. Because Reformation Day is really pointing back to Easter. And you cannot have freedom or liberty in the gospel without the Easter atonement. There is nothing that can compete with Easter. It's one of our most chief Christian holidays because in it we see our lo God's love poured out for us. We see how evil is stopped. We see how the devil is crushed and we watch as the blood of Jesus covers our sins. Without the atonement, you have nothing. Only with the atonement, with Jesus, are you free. Free to love and serve your neighbor. Do you have liberty to read the Bible, study your catechism, sing good hymns, and lead your families in the faith? Only in Jesus are your sins removed from you. May God be praised. Amen. We rise for the offertory.
Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the comfort of the gospel restored to your church on earth through the work of Martin Luther and other faithful pastors and leaders during the Reformation. We praise you that by your rich grace we have come to the sure knowledge that we stand justified before you, not by what we have done, but rather by faith in what your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, has done on our behalf. We implore you, defend your church from all enemies of your saving word. Cause your eternal gospel to be proclaimed in our time to every nation, tribe, language, and people on earth. And graciously preserve your truth for generations to come. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, make us truly your disciples. Keep us in your word. Free us from all errors. And make our homes and families peaceful. Preserve all fathers and encourage them for their godly task, that children will be brought up in the fear and instruction of the Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Be with our catechumens. Teach us also to hear and learn your word anew as disciples with them. Lord, in your mercy. Have mercy on our nation. Give us good and faithful rulers who will govern after your good pleasure. Give us comfort and a right understanding of your rule in this world, that we would not be deceived to think earthly powers will last forever, but have confidence in you alone. Your kingdom come. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our our prayers for the sick, the joyful, and all those in need, especially Bob, Reva, Kenneth, Hilda, Dwayne, Kim, Hannah and Brian, Bill and Judy, Bob and Chris, Alice Marie, Richard, Jack, Judy, Charles, Alistair, Nettie, and Cade. Answer their prayers, preserve them by your promises, and bring them safety through this world to everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy. You have given us the certainty of sins forgiven in your Son, set forth as a propitiation for our sins by his blood to be received by faith. So lead us to eat and drink your holy body and drink his precious blood in repentance and faith, now and always. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have brought us by your word out of the darkness of error and into the light of your grace. Mercifully help us to walk in that light. Guard us from error and false doctrine. And grant that we do not become ungrateful and despise your word, but receive it with all of our heart, conduct our lives according to it, and put our trust in your grace through the merits of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. At this time, the live stream of our service shall end. We encourage you to end with your families by praying the Lord's Prayer at home. The congregation.